the brothers and sisters in Dhamma. So first time in uh, the actually. Uh, so thank you for inviting me here, especially to give you a Dharma talk. And just a simple topic uh, actually uh, suggested and as you as it is displayed here living with compassion the key to sustainable mental well-being in buddhism it's a very uh, famous topic uh, and a lot of people actually uh, in the current society we see they are talking much about uh, mindfulness compassion mental well-being and kind of um, human development uh, so I also uh, facts related compassion based on uh, how compassion important and useful for the mental well-being. But it could be in the, a little bit different angle. And uh, sometimes I believe that uh, this Dhamma talk and this sharing Dhamma knowledge will be useful for all of you to understand, to check by yourself whether you are first practically applying this teaching to your life or not. So that's why I mentioned a lot of people today, they are seeking counselors, they are searching counselors, they are going to meet counselors. They are, of course, it's mean always, we used to see counselors mean we are full of stress. We are having kind of a lot of uh, burdens or of course we are not highly, we are not of course cultivated or applied this teaching to our life. That's the gap, that's the problem. So we try to find some solution depending on others and thinking that you can of course at least temporary or you can get some consolation to your life. So we'll see uh, whether really uh, we need a counselor or not. So do we have a best counselor in you or else we have to depend on the counselors out of us. So we have to understand it initially. Okay, so I will move to the first slide. Okay. So the mental well-being and compassion, we use a different terms, kindness, the compassion, uh, so many terms we use. Uh, especially we in Pali term, which we call uh, uh, ki kindness, kind of like a metta. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, you don't need to depend on the, especially what is the meaning of this word by word. But as a whole, the mental well-being and compassion or a compassion or mental well-being. You cannot talk for sub to understand compassion without mental well-being. You cannot talk about mental well-being without you training compassion, especially within you. So it's mean interconnected factors. If you uh, derive another term like mental well-being, it is the mindfulness. So if you talk about the kindness or the compassion or whatever human quality is, if really you are just talking, but it is not the result of developing your mindfulness, so it's mean you are, of course, very weak to apply practically these great qualities in your life. So naturally, we talk about mindfulness, why we need mindfulness. The first thing, human beings are the most important, especially the part of the society, especially they have a skill, ability to examine, to research, do research about their mental uh, nature of their mind. Buddha mentioned in the first stanza of the Dhammapada clearly, mind is the forerunner. The mind is always moving. So in another beautiful stanza in the third chapter, so dunnigahasalahuno yatta kamanipatino the mind naturally moves where it pleases. Even though you are sitting physically here, but it could be a little bit difficult for you to concentrate 
what this Bhante is talking or else where are you right now? So a bit difficult to concentrate on that. It is not, of course, abnormal. It's a normal, naturally, our mind, it is difficult to tame. It is difficult to control our, our emotions. So it's moving here and there, wherever, whatever things you get to your mind, whatever idea. So then uh, people, even though physically sitting, but mentally, they are not maybe here. So this is normal human being. That's the important task. Things you have to understand. So training the mind like that, the nature of mind is moving. But you are learning, practicing teaching of the Buddha to tame a, such a mind. Then the mind naturally is moving. That is not abnormal. But the way you train your mind is, of course, to tra train your mind, of course, to be in mindfulness. Where are you? What are you doing? Whatever the moment doesn't matter. So you are in that particular situation controlling your emotion. So this is, of course, a kind of a uh, battle. It's not easy. That's why the battle, of course, like uh, you are dealing with kind of uh, cankers, kind of uh, defilements, kind of uh, desires, kind of different thoughts. So we are taking thoughts in many ways. So you are in a trouble now, like how we can, of course, concentrate what we are doing right now. So then you understand mindfulness is not, it is not something miracle. It is not something just quickly come and establish. That's what we have to discuss. Why what happened today, people, they consider like after going one or two or three days meditation program, one week program, or they, they think, okay, they are very good in mindfulness. So then uh, practically when they try to apply, that is the problem where they, of course, encounter a lot of difficult situation when they are applying practically what they practice. So I will go to the third point. The are you practicing kindness today or the compassion today, mindfulness today? We'll have a very short example. A lot of people, uh, sometimes uh, when they talk with us, then naturally they say, Bhante, uh, actually a lot of Buddhist people, I'm not discouraging them. Of course, I encourage, okay? But just wanted to uh, tell you, like, uh, get an example. Some people, they say, Bhante, we have been doing meditation. They have been uh, participating for many uh, religious activities or meditation programs uh, wherever in Malaysia or overseas. So I just asked, uh, how long you have been practicing meditation? Sometimes they reply, Bhante, I have been doing for oh, now three or uh, four years, I have been practicing meditation. Okay, I, I appreciate. Sometimes the problem, actually, when you go to a particular program or when you try to focus your mind in a room where nobody is going to be disturbed you, of course mindfulness is there. It's not difficult to cultivate mindfulness or the, develop your mindfulness because nobody is disturbing. If your family members know you are doing meditation inside, then they are, they are also not going to disturb you. So then you are sitting in a single room, nobody is disturbing, nobody talking to you. So of course you can... Uh, uh, control your emotion easily. So you can, then you think, okay, I've been practicing, I have been practicing meditation now years and years. So my kindness, compassion, generosity, the good qualities, of course, I'm full with, I'm good in the good qualities. Of course, from where you check your meditation now? You don't have any other place to check, only the society. Where you meet a lot of problems. From where you get angry? You get angry in the society, not in the single room, nobody disturb you. In a single room, you don't get angry because no any kind of opposite mind, opposite situation. So always you remember, if you want to check your meditation level, that's the best place to check is society. If you are a person controlling your emotion where you get angry, understanding angry is something to destroy my mindfulness, so by understanding this situation, if you can apply what you practice inside the room in a practical manner, of course you are success. If you are a person who used to get jealousy by seeing other people's success or whatever, in a moment like when you experience this negative situation, if you can apply your practice where you get jealousy, of course you are success. If you are a person who used to be a lo lot of lazy, like to, you don't have any kind of uh, enthusiasm to do any work, 
So where you face this negative situation, if you are of course okay to apply your qualities where you practice inside the room or inside the meditation, whatever program, of course you are success. Then now the question belong to you by yourself, you can decide, of course you are practicing kindness or not, okay? You are practicing meditation or not. In Buddhism, we have been uh, doing uh, two kind of uh, offering. The, normally in the popular Buddhism, we give priority for the material offering very much, but less attention we are paying to the uh, spiritual offering. But you have to understand, if you really consider about, even though it is a material offering or the spiritual offering, it is connect with the mindfulness. Of course, connect with the mindfulness. And the second important thing, all the material offerings lead to the spiritual offering. We'll give a simple example. Now we offer flower to the Buddha. We light the candle. But we normally don't think uh, very much about that. We, we just do need as an initial, uh, like a, as a commencement of this uh, ritual activity. So just we are doing as the simple way how we used to do. But offering flower in Buddhism, it is of course ethical based activity. It is a material thing. But you remember through the material thing, you have to go, you can of course go to the next steps. So mindfulness should be there to go to the next steps. Example, we say in the first stanza of offering flower, one guno petang etang kusama thing, pujiami munindasa siri padasarove. The flower is uh, so, so beautiful. And uh, normally people, you know, in our in our Sinhalese culture, in our childhood, uh, our parents encourage us, okay, offer the flower to the Buddha so you can have a beautiful uh, skin and like a flower. Actually, the simple uh, example is, but of course, you see the second stanza. This initially it is a material offering, but you should concentrate. The flower, the beauty of flower, it's with the time being fade away, going away. But this beauty of flower, it doesn't last. So the life is like that. Puppam milayati atai dem kayo is my body. Kayo tatayati. You have to understand, concentrate how your body is okay, subjected to change. But this is, of course, a result of developing your mind. We see a lot of people do this material offering only, but they don't consider what is the, the philosophical part of offering material thing. Of course, leading, those are the prerequisite and leading for the spiritual offering and leading for the mindfulness. All the offering, all the religious ritual activities in Buddhism especially, it has a meaning. It has meaning. No, without meaning, nobody of course introduced those things. Okay, some of things actually uh, uttered by the Buddha, some of things actually added later part, but still all these activities connected of course to how we can develop our mindfulness. Okay, then the important thing. So kindness or the compassion, we have to understand with them. A lot of people give some interpretation. I have seen sometimes we have a great philosophy. Of course, we cannot compare the teaching of the Buddha with any teaching. Not I'm not criticizing the religious concept. But even though we know that some people depend on the Western rooted facts, still they are having very uh, rich culture, rich philosophy. Even though they have rich philosophy, rich teaching, rich uh, texts or the suttas, we try to depend on some modern concept. But I, mean, I think it is because they are of course not going through properly the teaching of the Buddha. So how we people understand this one? Sometimes uh, right or wrong, how we understand. We don't need to do it that to measure in a different angle, different way. 
So we can go with the dhamma. We can decide it with dhamma easily. So therefore, first thing, important thing in the world we know, we are doing mistake. We are not, of course, totally perfect. Okay? So there is a, in the literature, beautiful uh, uh, idea. There are only two perfect person in the world. There are two perfect person in the world, two persons. Do you know who they are? One already died. Other one, not yet born. What does it mean? Living, all the living beings, they are doing mistakes. So nobody perfect. That is why we continuously observe five precepts. How many times you observe five precepts in your life? So every time when you come here, what, wherever you are going, participate in some religious deed, you are observing five precepts. Why? If you, of course, have these five precepts, of course, again and again, you don't need to observe. But still you are thinking that if there is a, any, uh, even the slight the mistake, if you have done, so then you try to, uh, of course, uh, renew it, like. So then, we have to understand. But problem is, we all are doing mistake. This is not the matter. But the problem is, some people, when they do mistake, they don't accept it. Naturally, they say, this mistake is because of my mother, uh, because of my father, because of my friend, because of my someone. But they don't li like to accept it. That is the, that is abnormal. Okay, doing mistake is not abnormal, but ac not accepting what you did, that is abnormal. So the people, wise people, who of course go with Dhamma, they decide the mistake with Dhamma. It is of course just like, if you are getting ready to go somewhere, first you go where? If you are getting ready, having the new clothes and uh, having a lot of uh, kind of things and uh, especially uh, having a lot of uh, the, uh, you know, be beauty things into your face or like that, then you go first to the in front of the mirror. Then you check whether, of course, everything is fine or not. Of course, in our life, we should have a mirror. That mirror is Dhamma. You don't need to compare with any modern teaching. Please go with Dhamma to decide whether this action wrong or right. Very easy. If the action is harmful to yourself, detrimental to yourself, if it is detrimental to others, so that action is wrong. If the action is not going to harmful to any of you, so action is good. Very easy to decide with Dhamma. So, we have to understand and should take the fact or the teaching or the compassion or the mindfulness or whatever thing with the text, especially with the teaching of the Buddha in a right way. The best example given in Alagadhupam Sutta. I think you may have heard. So in ancient Indian society, people used to uh, catch, uh, catch a snake. Okay? So with the modern technology, now not only the snake, because last in the, in the ancient society, uh, so people use the extracted the poison of the snake uh, to uh, in the ayurvedic for the ayurvedic treatment but now not not like that anyway buddha used a very beautiful simile what could be happen if you catch the snake in a wrong place it will turn to you and bite you the same if you catch the dhamma in a wrong place of course you'll never get the result of the benefit of dhamma a lot of people, they are, of course, that's why I earlier mentioned why we depend on the modern context, modern text, modern ideas. We have a rich philosophy, rich teaching. Go with the teaching of Buddha. Go with the sutras. Of course, you will get a beautiful and very vast knowledge about Dhamma. Sometimes, if you are not taken in the right way, as a snake, how bite to you, the same as if you get the wrong way Dhamma, you get the wrong understanding. Example in uh, Metani Sansa Sutta. The Metani Sansa Sutta, it talks about the benefits about uh, how you do the meditation, Metta meditation. Okay? So if you do the Metta meditation, you 
uh, you will be able to uh, uh, get the obtain the 11 benefits. Out of 11, there are three benefits. Of course, uh, you are free from poison, uh, free from uh, weapon, and uh, free from fire. How miracle. <laughs> okay, if you are doing the Metta meditation, you are free from weapons. No, no need to be afraid. Can go anywhere. No need to be afraid because you are. Nobody can, of course, kill you. And you are free from fire. Even even though you jump into the fire, no problem. And you are free from uh, fire, weapon, and poison. Actually, if you get the meaning in the right way and superficially, you get that's the meaning. Then people thinking of that do the metta meditation to protect for their protection. The what kind of protection they expect? The material protection. But metta meditation leading for the not the material protection. It's of course to train your mind. What does it mean? You are free from poison, free from weapon, free from the fire. Of course, the greed, hatred, and delusion. If you are having greed, hatred, delusion, you are suffering always inside. Okay? So almost like you are having poison. Almost like you are burning in the fire. If you are having this kind of a wrong mentality, of course, so you are suffering. So if you do the metta meditation, you are free from this suffering. That is what the meaning is there. But if you peep the superficially peep into the superficial meaning, the like uh, the simple meaning, initially you get, oh, you are free from fire, free from weapons, free from poison. So that is why we should go with the Dhamma. If you are not go with Dhamma, you never can understand what is mindfulness, at least in a meaning also you cannot understand. But you just practice in mean, of course, no right foundation. So then whatever building, whatever constructions you are doing, of course, not lasting. The foundation should be very good, very strong. So therefore, I think the most important thing, the getting and taking these factors according to the Dhamma. That's why I mentioned kindness or the compassion, mindfulness. If you want to, to find the, what, are, what are the key sustainable factors to develop your mindfulness, of course, you have to go with the Dhamma to understand and get the right way. If not, then you never can, of course, to practice this one. So then, the kindness then you have to practice, not sometimes people think kindness should come uh, through mind. It's only one. But kindness should develop mind, body, and speech. It should be mind, body, and speech. It means your action, through your action, through your words, and uh, through your thoughts, through your behavior. So if you are not okay to practice kindness from mind, body, and speech, of course, only you are trying to practice the kindness like only with thought, but initially, but your kindness go to the society and get the result through your action and your words, not with your thoughts only. So these three are interconnected. Now you check again, whether your kindness or the compassion or the mindfulness or your knowledge, the result of your knowledge, you start of your practice, go to the society through your body, mind, and speech. That's what I, check. I, I, I said initially, I told you. Some people, they are doing meditation, but in the family context, so many problems. In the social life, so many contexts, so many problems. In a working place, so many problems. They are full of stress then. But then what happened through the behavior, through the action, through the thought, through the words or the speech, you are not practicing it then. That's the best way to understand this. If you take the family context, what issues they are, of course, because of the way you are not controlling your words, they're not controlling your behavior. You see, out of these three matters, is there any problem? Nothing. 
if you get the, all this negative situation, what going in family, if you take in what one by one, of course, you can clearly see, but to see this one also, you should have mindfulness. Otherwise, you don't like, you don't want to see it. So, you, and you see clearly one by one, of course, this is because of my words, my speech. This is because of my behavior. Because this is because of his behavior. Like that, you can slowly understand. This understanding only the path for you to apply and find some solution. Otherwise, you cannot. Okay. So then, the beautiful uh, uh, picture here, the mindful or mindful, the similar uh, way pronoun pronouncing. And the first picture is, uh, of course, mindful, full with a lot of uh, thoughts or a lot of uh, targets or a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mentalities. The second one is a bit uh, relaxed mood is there. The, that's what we suggest here. But I just use this one to denote, to imply you something important. You see, Buddha used a very beautiful stanza in uh, Dhammapada. Napare sang vilomani, napare sang katakatang, attano avektiya katani akatani chai. Now I, I try in my Dhamma talk, I'm not going to load and give everything and ask you to do everything. It's not practical. The, my effort is, of course, training you, at least you to abstain or like away from doing what you used to do. If you are not doing this one, of course, you are so successful. Napare sang vilomani, napare sang kata kata. We see that, like, you, you check with you. When two persons somewhere, they talk what? Do they talk about them? I don't think. Maybe really it's happened, but I'm not telling that everybody is like that. But two or three persons together, we used to share some gossips. We used to talk some so many empty words. We used to talk uh, DVC speech. This is a natural way we are doing. We, we enjoy with those. What would the mention? Your mind going to be full with garbage then. You are, you are, by using your own sense faculties, your own eye, your own ears, you are taking and collecting the factors which, what are in the outer world, those are garbage. When you fill your mind with garbage, what happened? How mind cannot produce something new? Mind also produces garbage because inside the mind only garbage. So that's the result. Easily you can understand. If the mind is full with the so many, so many negative emotions like a jealousy or anger, the gossip or the empty words or like uh, many, many of things. So the mind don't know what produce. The mind naturally used to produce something negative, garbage. Wow. That's why we talk about gossips. Because in my mind, full with garbage, the mind naturally give the result because mind don't have any other seed to give some kind of a good result, it gives because based on the seed you already planted there. You have planted some negative emotion, negative thoughts, then mind naturally produce something negative. Ah, then you have to understand easily. So then slowly you, you should understand, okay, if you're mindful with the negative thing, ah, okay, negative thing also mind produce negative thing. If your mind okay with the good things, of course, when you have a good things, you don't feel kind of a, it is a burden. Okay? So it is, it, it is not a burden. You simply think for a while, like, okay, we come to this place and offer puja to Buddha. You find so relaxed. You think for a while we in an environment like this. Okay? So, but you think uh, you have to do something like uh, many other things and you have to go to the see your relatives and do some activities with them, so the mind always not very relaxed. It's kind of under depression, under pressure. So then, here the I picture I use uh, no more, no more the forms, no more images, but it means there is something, but you don't give priority for all those things. When you train your mind with the time, what happened, it become very generalized. 
the mindfulness initially compassion or the kindness initially feel difficult to practice but with the time being it's become very natural and very normal to you of course a part of your life someone who doesn't like to wake up in the early morning if they train to wake up a bit early of course only one week two weeks three weeks later then don't feel like that no feel any difficulties no undergoing any difficulties to get up early morning simple example if you used to uh, uh, be vegetarian sometimes initially you are uh, you are you feel some difficulties but with the time become very normal same this practice initially you are facing so many so many problem but when you practice continually continually what happen it bring the nice result to you then it become generalized it become generalized then once it become generalized you don't consider it is kindness it is you are not showing to others you are you are having kindness naturally this qualities are of course coming and especially when you whatever thing you are doing when you move to the society wherever the situation whatever the situation no problem the kindness compassion should come natural way if it is not natural if it is artificial of course it is not the right compassion because you want to show you want to maintain some status that's why that's why i said if you see a lot of people in the world if you see the lot of philanthropist or the donors or the people who are doing some big uh, dana sometimes they want to show this one but to get attention from others that's how they are doing the welfare to get the attention from others but that is not the right way in buddhism of course if you can give anything without an expectation that is the right way you are doing dana that's the term explain giving is the meaning give up give up mean give up of course you cannot keep any expectation like thinking ah, i should need something something like that naturally those things are coming and protecting you but no expectation there just telling like then the mind becomes so relaxed then no need to think about so many ideas no need to fill the mind with so many concepts then mind so naturally moving here and there so relaxed that's the mindful that's the prerequisite uh, if you really want to do the meditation that's why we are finding a place called the room or where nobody going to disturb you that's why we are going to the training programs because the mind become the like the next picture the, that's environment is very supportive to you but you think the way are you have the picture like the second one but always you have to move with the first picture where are there so many negative situations going on but if you are weak to apply what you practice in a place where nobody going to disturb to you so you are really weak then you are not of course practicing and not applying napare sang vilomani napare sang katha katha easiest way to understand where we lose the mindfulness and how we can cultivate in one stanza explained beautiful way as i mentioned two person together three person together in a group we used to talk about others and we when you talk about others then of course the like the first picture we full our mind fill our mind with a lot of lot of negative things then mind always produce something negative so that is why napare sangilo mani we should should not try we should not pry into the what other people are doing what they are doing who they are we no need to think about that so we should always consider who you are the person inside you the situation inside you so that is the important part to understand basically if you really want to to practice this mindfulness of course if you are a person to use to think about and other things huh? sometimes people think Uh, here actually we see the only few people sometimes you say oh they haven't come they haven't no problem even a single person are coming two person are coming three person are coming it's okay but sometimes we get a uh, kind of a negative mind thinking that why other people even though we ask them to come they are not coming but no need if you think like that of course even the 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 most important thing what you can get from here also you are not taking because your mind is of course in a struggle thinking about something useless okay so then in buddhism 
we get the word like as mentioned earlier, compassion of the karuna is defined as the heartfelt wish for others to be free from suffering. The free from suffering is mean, of course, is a true suffering, material suffering and spiritual suffering. In fact, we cannot initially close to the people, okay, so the spirituals to, to get rid, to free them from spiritual suffering. Only through the material suffering, we can lead and we can teach them there is something called spiritual suffering. Even though we are having plenty of goods or properties or vehicle or the money or whatever thing, still, people are, of course, difficult for them to the find the lasting satisfaction. They are depend on the kind of a material thing. If you are not developing the spiritual, if you are spiritual success, what happened? When the material things going to be changed, you are going to be suffered more. The important thing, because you embrace the material things very much, embrace being the kind of a attachment, the grasping. When you attach to the, the material thing, those things, even animate or inanimate things, subject to change. You cannot understand these changes because you grasp to those things in a tightly. That is why the material uh, suffering, of course, if you understand proper way, then of course you can go to the spiritual understanding what is spiritual suffering. That's why I mentioned in the Four Noble Truth. We just telling so many years Four Noble Truth, Dukkha, Dukkha Samudhi, Nirodha, Nirodha Magga, suffering, the reason for the suffering, and uh, uh, away from the suffering, something like for the path to the Nibbana, something like that. But the most important part is there, what? It is, of course, connect with the material suffering and spiritual suffering. How connect it? You see, the first noble uh, truth is called Dukkha, suffering. But suffering, what is the, what would the mention to do? Would the mention Dukkhaṁ Parinyaya. Parinyaya means should, should understand. Suffering is to be understood. If, the, if you are meeting a doctor, if doctor cannot diagnose the properly, diagnose you properly, what kind of uh, ailments, what kind of uh, sickness you are having, he cannot suggest any medicine, any medication, any treatment. Same like that. If you are not understanding what is material suffering, of course, you cannot find the reason for the suffering. Then you are suffering, suffering for years and years, you are, of course, continuing. You are not going to be free from suffering because you, you are not going to understand it. Example, if you are a, if are someone who want to do the mindfulness, first you have to understand what are the, the barriers you are having for the mindfulness. If you are not understanding barriers, you cannot get rid of all the barriers. That is why we should understand this, the material suffering, through the material suffering, we can of course go to the spiritual suffering. It means through the understanding what is material suffering, then only we can uh, get rid from the spiritual suffering. It means the sansaric situation. Okay, the loving kindness in two words I use here. I'm not, there are so many interpretations, but simply explain the wish for all being to be happy involves the cultivating unconditional love and goodwill. Actually, the, this is the second situation. The unconditional love is the second situation. The first situation is, of course, try to, to have a good mind, the mentality, good thoughts, to thinking that all people, all being, be uh, to be happy, okay, wishing them to be happy, all the all the all all people, all the animals, or the whatever. So this mind is not easy to develop. Okay, it means you cannot be partial. You cannot think only your family members. You cannot think like ah, only these people, only these people. This is very difficult. That's why not easy mindfulness or the compassion as you think it is not easy. You are training your mind to wish not only to you, not only your family members, without any partial, you are of course spreading your the thoughts to all the beings. That's why it is not just a word, actually. It is not a, just a word. People think always, people wish to other people be happy. But of course, it is. it has become like only a thought, only a concept now. But this is 
very nice uh, way you are wishing them. And remember, if you are doing this wish with the compassion, full of compassion, it has a power. That is why chanting is full of power. Buddha uttered this chanting with the compassion, full of compassion. That is why when you see the, the, very, the very close example, the mother, of course, uh, blessing always to their children. Okay? Wherever they are going, whatever they are doing, you are doing your blessing for them. Okay? To be a success, whatever they are doing. So that blessing come, of course, from your heart. Okay? Then that blessing has a power, actually. It is very pure. Then the pure mind means, of course, mindfulness, full of compassion. Then if you think with that compassion, compassionate mentality to others or be happy, of course, they are, you are doing a very pure intention. You are doing it very pure intention. It is very powerful. So remember then, if you want to get the result, whatever wishing you are, whatever blessing you are doing, it should come from your heart and we should be with a pure mind. Just like how mother bless their children, so it works, of course, it works. Okay, so the prevent, this another thing is, okay, so I mentioned, I'm not going to put a lot of factors to you. I initially request you, don't fill your mind with garbage. If you are fill your mind with garbage, mind produce only garbage. So then how you can get rid from them, just suggest us something like simple way, don't need to Try into the no need to peep into the others and what other people are doing. Try to peep into yourself. Easily you can be, you can read who you are. Then, of course, you can make changes in your life first. Okay, then you can be exemplary to others and then they will follow you. The, the another most important advice you, okay, the practicing the right effort in your life should have a good effort. If you have effort for whatever thing, for the exam, if you have effort, it could be very successful. In your working life, also should have effort. If you want to maintain and keep going, your family life should have effort, kind of a contribution. So my suggestion, advice with Dhamma for you, especially for effort, training your mind for effort, very easy for you to cultivate mindfulness, cultivate compassion base mindfulness very easy there are four efforts mentioned to prevent to abandon to develop to strengthen to prevent this is the samma vayama the second uh, the second step of the eightfold path to prevent to abandon to develop to strengthen we'll see with the dhamma the first one uppan anuppannanam akusalanam dhamma nang anuppadaya that's the in the text, in the Dhamma. Anuppannanam akusalanam mean some negative thoughts which not arisen, which not have with you. Okay? Akusalanam Dhamma anuppadai. You should, okay, try to prevent whatever negative thought that you are not having at the moment. If you, those, if those negative things Okay, try to attack to you, come to you slowly, come into you. Your effort should be to prevent all those negative thoughts, negative behavior, negative action, negative behavior, or negative, uh, whatever negative thing, emotional part could be. Okay, example, if you don't think about like, if you are not having jealousy, greedy, hatred, those things, okay, can come through socialization, through moving to people, from any other different environment. So try to understand, I'm not a person who used to get jealousy. Jealousy was not with me. Angry was not with me. Okay, I'm not a person who used to talk about others. I'm not a person who used to kill animals. Not, I'm not a person who used to tell lies. Okay, I'm not a person who used to do the kind of a mis misconduct then you understand this is something what was not with you. Then what happened? You prevent, you should try to prevent when those things naturally come in. That's why I said what you practice inside the room should check within the outer world society, whether you are having or not. 
ah you know if you are a person think about the dhamma you go with the dhamma then you check this one with the in the society how oh these negative qualities i had an earlier so why i want to get them now prevent them then the first effort is anupannana anupanna mean not yet arise not yet with you akusalana mean wrong things wrong mind wrong wrong thoughts okay so anupada your effort should be to prevent those things to stop them okay whatever extinguish all those things like uh, when those things are coming okay first effort then understand first effort if any unwholesome thing if you are not having right now you should train your brain mind first to understand this is wrong the i don't like this then i if i don't like me even other people don't like it okay if you don't like to, uh, to share you about you someone to share about your life some gossip about you even other people don't like when you share about the gossip about other people the simple way you can understand the effort first effort is preventing the second effort is uppannanam akusalanam dhamma nang anuppadaya this is second effort sometimes you are having some negative emotion sometimes you will get angry quickly sometimes we have a jealousy sometimes we used to talk about other people sometimes we are telling lies sometimes we are doing some stealing simple simple at least simple thing or whatever okay but still we are having this negative my negative emotion okay uppannana it's mean already arisen with you in your heart in your mind akusala anandam mana harmful thing to yourself and others ah anupada so uh, you pahana you should your effort should be to abandon the negative qualities negative disqualities you are having at the moment that's the second effort very easy to practice not difficult okay this very these are very easy efforts the first effort is to practice what you don't have when come those thing you understand and you don't take those things second things if you are having at the moment some kind of uh, even the slight kind of a uh, negative emotion then go with the dhamma dhamma consider in the mirror in front of you so decide all those things with dhamma then decide of course you no need to take all those things okay then slowly get rid of those okay you will get a huge success development physically and mentally with the time be okay if you are practicing this second quality second effort third effort develop anupannanam kusala anandam manam uppadai anupannana mean not yet arisen what kusala anandam manam mean wholesome deeds wholesome mind wholesome action wholesome behavior okay behavior which is not detrimental to yourself and detrimental to others so try to develop it try to develop it it's been cultivated slowly cultivated okay so you will then the your mind become as i mentioned the two pictures like a very relaxed mood because these are of course some attitude which are not heavy not heavy if you are having heavy heavy attitude what happen you are collecting lot of garbage only but when you are having the very uh the light attitudes like this we call in uh, in a modern way we call like soft skill something like it's mean so easily you can of course uh, to develop your qualities what you don't have but you try to develop with them the let's the the third effort last effort is okay uppannanam kusalanandam manam bhiyo bhavai arisen okay at the moment you are having you are a person who try to practice uh, get rid away from the jealousy but you always encounter some negative situation that you have to be wise okay this is a negative situation to check my level of jealousy it is a challenges are coming always to check your qualities that's how we should think challenges are coming to check our level okay then if you are getting this situation it is a challenge in a family context if you okay people are like uh, shouting and having some problem all this you have to be wise ah uh, not uh, keep taking keep talking keep talking but you have to be wise okay oh, it is a challenge to check uh, my jealousy or the anger or whatever negative situation ah uh, then the you have to slowly strengthen these qualities good qualities 
if you are a person to away from jealousy, it is to be strengthened slowly, step by step. That's why I mentioned mindfulness doesn't come automatically or immediately, suddenly, quickly. It is a result of practicing continuous practicing. That's why jealousy, we cannot away from the jealousy quickly. Okay, jealousy, sometimes, okay, you, if we have a, like in the childhood, we know that uh, when you have a sister, or the brother, when mother's uh, parents are passing something to sister, uh, the younger brother, the elder brother get angry. So then elder brother, sir, to some extent, can consider, oh, okay, it is my younger brother, no problem. Okay, thinking like that in the simple way. But uh, that is the simple, but from where you, what, what you practice there, but you should be able to apply to even other people. Ah, okay, even they also, no problem. They are getting the things, no problem. But only you have trained your mind to apply only your uh, bonds, in, in, within your bonds, but not only within your bonds, but even the outer world. That is why we should strengthen it. We should uh, develop it. To develop all ways, we have to engage different activities. So listening them, giving them, engaging some kind of a wholesome deeds, all these are actually with the meaning they have developed. That's why even the initially those are material thing, material offering, but leading for the spiritual offering. How is spiritual offering come? This is very scientifically you have to understand. How this material offering lead to spiritual offering? This is the way you try to train your mind to get rid of all the negative things, to stop whatever negative things are coming, to cultivate some good seed, good things, and to strengthening whatever good things you are having at the moment. If you are a person who used to have a good qualities, okay, strengthen by engaging so many good deeds, good activities, then easily you can see the huge development in your physically and mentally. Okay, so I have mentioned here some, uh, some factors, but not going to take uh, much time. So giving you opportunity to raise some question, but th these are the ideas, you know, that I mentioned like people are full of today, like, stress and anxiety. So this is the way like you can day-to-day -day life uh, to, to balance your emotional things, especially uh, how you can apply the teachings. You see that uh, how overcome the anger uh, with peace and overcome the evil with the fruits and overcome the self uh, selfishness by giving and overcome life with fruit. Okay, it's been replaced. Life always try to replace the uh, to these qualities with good qualities, okay? Then the replacement is the important, but to replace it, your effort should be to continue with it, okay? Effort should be, always should be there. And then, uh, so other thing is, we see today in the, in the current world, the, so many negative situations is going in family, family context and the working place, the social life, uh, and uh, especially the family, the connect, uh, you know, interconnection, especially inter interpersonal relationship, especially within the family also now, uh, bit sometimes we see some 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 problems they are having, they are facing, undergoing some uh, difficulties. But this is what mentioned with the so especially uh, so how we should develop like like the, how mother protects her own child, okay, how mother. Uh, you should be able to get, take your mind to that level to spread your kindness to others. Okay, so it's mean that's why I mentioned no, it is not very easy. Immediately, you cannot uh, uh, replace all those things. The example, uh, the previous slide has mentioned so anger with the peace or the overcome evil with the goods, but this thing cannot be replaced quickly, suddenly. That should have a continued practice. That's why we are doing those awesome deeds continuously. The result will be a nice thing to you. Okay, these are the facts like you can think then uh, easily in your day to day life how, how you can apply the, the compassion in your day to day life. You have to be a good listener always to others. Could be your husband, too, could be your wife, okay, could be your the children or so the naked relatives, all over. Doesn't matter. Listening is not a problem. When you listen, you learn something at least. When you speak, only you speak what you know. When you listen, of course, you have a more opportunity, more access opening to get so many factors from other people to share the factors, share the knowledge. Okay, so you are now listening. Okay, how could we happen if you also talk now with me like, then I will talk less and you will talk more. Then finally, we cannot get some the, the fruitful result. Then the listening you have to train and uh, 
If the short time is in a small ways, initially you should show like a small helping, like a, even the simple thing, the simple thing. Okay, so you can show these things. It, it's in the day-to-day -day activities, the, your daily activities. Sometimes uh, we don't need to think about uh, other people are not helping to you, other people are not doing to you, but they will do. If you do it in the right way, in the, in the pure mind, of course, it has a kind of power. It has a power. We cannot, these invisible things, we cannot read with the, the words or the language. We cannot read. These are invisible, but it has power. When you, of course, having these qualities, automatically, it's a kind of a ways, kind of a brain spirit to other people. Okay, it's automatically happening. Okay, you will see upper health in need. I'm not going to just just uh, simply uh, going through the factors how you can deal with the initially, but I I believe that uh, you are going always with dharma. Then you are of course uh, uh, higher than this level. But these things are basic. But if you are not having this even the basic practice in your day to day life, try to apply it. It could be a the key to vast massive change in your life, especially in your family context and in the working place, in the social life. Okay, so uh, the most important thing from here you get this, uh, especially when you lose your mental well being. The most important thing in today, people lose their mental well being. There's a beautiful stanza Atitanan, Vagami, Napatkanke, Anagata, Pachupanan, Chayodam, and Tatatata Vichakum. So Atitanan, Vagami, Napatkanke, Anagata. A lot of people. If you get something like think, uh, if you think uh, something negative, this negative thing is a result of something you, you have something your memory. You of course you are moving to the past and you get the past situation to present. What happens when you get the past experience to make the present situation negative experience? You lose the the present peaceful mind also. A lot of people used to think about depending on the past memories. Of course, past is past. Just telling him, like in the liquid, the past is gone, close the door. So don't open the door, then past will come. Of course, the past memory is always still your beautiful present. Other people are living on the lot of depend on the expectation, thinking, oh, next year, next year, and then within next five years, next year. Good to have some uh, idea. It is not wrong. But I mean here negative. You know, a lot of people when they come to us, they some the reason one person came think, asking Bhante, I think when I go on the road that some people will come and kill me. And uh, I will meet with an accident. That's the mind is, is that it? So it's me. He because of thinking about the expectation, like thinking about the future situation, he loses his beautiful present moment, happiness. So therefore, you know it depends on the past, not it depends on the future. So that is a part of Pandyanagar. The Buddha, Buddha mentioned, okay, so uh, try to depend on the moment and the moment you, what you are doing, what you are doing right now. That's the most important thing. If you listen, you are listening. If you are driving, you are driving. If you are eating, you are having it. If you are reading something, you are reading. If you are writing, you are writing. Okay, this sun is maximum. If you are driving, we thinking about the moment you are really mindfulness is there. Okay, mental will be is there. No more accident for what can be. But you can argue that accident may come because of other people are coming with without, without mindfulness. But you can at least you save your life in a way. Okay. So it could be happen, how happen like sometimes if, if you are from your side, how whatever small thing happens, you can control it. Okay, when people are, they are depending on past or when they depend on the future, they are moving to different form. So it means they are losing their present habits. Okay, so then the mention clearly, you don't need to go to the past, the future is yet to come, you don't need to depend on the future. This is useless and wasting your time. Okay, and then uh, there are the beautiful uh, factors are mentioned in Kamarana Parayana Sutta. Uh, I think it is a familiar sutta. I am trying to uh, explain, but in a, in a beautiful way to explain, you know, in Tamil Nadu, so some people moving from uh, light to dark, uh, some people moving from light so dark to dark, dark to uh, light, light to dark, and light to light. Okay, so it's really depend on the qualities you are having. Okay, then this way. 
So the mention, uh, so it's a very tamu tamu pa tamu tamu parai tamu do to parai no do to tamu parai no do to do to parai. Tamu tamu parai no me go to da to da. They don't want to apply big based group politics. They are thinking that these are the things I should have with their own experience. So put a lot of conference. And tamu do to parai. Some people, of course, do to tamu parai. Some people like that. We see it. some people they are practicing, they have been practicing meditation and dharma and participating in so many events like this, but after that they disappear with the time. So this means some people like Yodhamo Parayana, they are in initially they are in the life, but they don't know, they don't want to go more and more, then they go from light to dark. Then they are going from the uh, one point to the one one place for the it's like negative place. Some people, of course, Tamo Jodi Parayana, they be the Dhamma. Go with the teachings, they practice with the disabilities of course, slowly they are moving from dark to light and strengthening, as I mentioned earlier, the same effort like uh, they do do they are moving from light to light. So they are of course going uh, more and more as a result of practicing this work. Okay, uh, these are the things. Okay, so then the engagement in the community also it is very important if you want to practice uh, compassion and mindfulness. So these are, as I mentioned, I earlier mentioned, these are material activities, but leading for the spiritual realm. Leading for the spiritual realm, easily you can, when you engage uh, this kind of religious festival, the reading data stories, transferring merit, these are initially you see that only as some simple activities, but always yes, so yes, a meaning. The meaning always leading for concentrating my focus on particular thing and develop good qualities in me. When you engage with those things, you remember you don't have a chance to have a wrong things, wrong politics, this politics, no chance. Because mind always engage in something good thing. Of course, mind doesn't want to grab for the collect for the wrong thing from our world. Because mind is practicing something at the moment. That's why I encourage you to practice this thing. Then with the time being, of course, when the mind is not filling with the garbage, then mind, of course, not going to produce garbage. That's what happened with the practice of this. Uh, good calls and deed and politics. Okay, so uh, these are the key practices in Buddhism. So universal love, as you mentioned, the metta and the sufferings of, and especially to, to you should be able to understand what it is detrimental to you and it is detrimental to us. Something like that. Okay, ahimsa is another good concept in Buddhism and generosity and equanimity. Okay, these are simple concepts, but to be discussed in broadly. But anyway, I believe that the my my effort, uh, of course, was to explain through the mindfulness how you can develop compassion. That's why I suggested for you to practice for effort in your life. And mindfulness should come not only in your life, the mind, but it is connected with the thoughts, it's connected with the action, it's with mind, speech, and body. Okay? When you practice with those things, of course, you will be able to, as I mentioned, do it, do it, from come do it, come from dark to light, and Jyoti, Jyoti Parayama, go from life to life, okay? That is the, the way that you train your mind. Then, wherever you are going, in a very, whatever the society, wherever you are meeting so many problems, no issue, you can apply what you practice inside the room, single, individually, you can apply in the society. You always remember the negative situation come to you, those are the challenges to check your meditation level, check your mindfulness, check your challenge, check your kindness. Okay, then you should train your mind to apply quickly in the moment we are going to get negative situation. Okay, so we go down. There is a sadhu tree there. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much, Shumante, for the very comprehensive, informative, and also insightful Dhamma talk. Um, we would like to open the floor for Q&A. So if you have a question, um, please raise your hand. Uh, kindly use the mic because we will be recording the Q&A as well. No, would I, one day? Uh, I would like to ask a question because just now you mentioned that actually, correct me if I'm wrong, you mentioned that um, we should use the Dharma for uh, to help ourselves with our suffering, with our anxieties, this and that, instead of like relying on other uh, things, maybe modern things. Uh, so, mm, but sometimes... I feel like it is not enough to only use the technique that uh being taught in uh meditation retreat or like uh in the Dharma. Like sometimes I also co uh 
combined with other things, maybe more modern things. Like there's some techniques to alleviate anxiety. Um, and then sometimes I do see the Dharma in these techniques as well. So uh, for example, uh, just a small example, there's something called anagram, which is basically uh, profiling to profile yourself. Like actually the, the teaching itself, it's not, it doesn't come from the Buddha, but there's man, there are many things there. It's actually like uh, related to Dharma as well. So, um, and also there's some other things that connected to mindfulness as well. well what do you think about this? Like, yeah. yeah. Buddhism is uh, actually is not developed as a discipline, I mean, like a subject. In a modern subject, of course, they have a framework, a theoretical uh, framework, of course, uh, to deal with the situation. Like, example, we call uh, psychology or uh, counseling, being in the modern technique, in the modern world, Western Buddhism. So it has a kind of developed framework. Okay. But in Buddhism, we, we, we don't have a framework like that to measure that way. But the first thing, of course, in the modern technology, they have a way to measure mindfulness. But actually, it is not 100% perfect. We cannot measure mindfulness. Because mindfulness, you can measure only through behavior, what you are doing right now. If you are smiling with someone, and if you are talking with someone in friendly manner, somebody can say, oh, you are so good, you are friendly talking. So it depends on that measuring. You can, we cannot, of course, totally measure. You are, of course, mindful. So it is invisible thing. It's impossible to explain with that. That is why in Buddhism, we don't have a framework as developing a modern subject, disciplinary. So the, my suggestion for you, of course, sometimes when we go with the Dharma, like people initially try to apply meditation. That is totally wrong. When you try to apply initial meditation, what happens? Your foundation is not very strong. Okay, you try to apply first. Okay, first is you should have enough knowledge. You, I suggest you, more than practicing meditation, I'm not discouraging you, better to practice meditation. But whatever thing you see from the modern technique, the modern world, in the modern society, like some uh, replacement or the, some technique to solve the, some negative situation, of course, all those things are going with them. But the problem, we are having not adequate knowledge about them. So if you, I, if I suggest you, if you like to accept my suggestion, of course, there could be a, some solution for you. I suggest you, if you have a time, go with them, read the sutras. Read the sutras. Of course, you no need to listen to even Dharma talk also, finally. Of course, the Buddha is a, I don't know how to tell like that, it is a, he said, really, the knowledge he had, we cannot compare with whatever the situation, this training we are having in the modern world. Of course, vast. So, you go with the Dhamma, you have a kind of, now in the modern world, we have an easy way to get the access for the Dhamma. You follow the Dhamma, uh, following you, try to read first, okay? The, follow, the following will become the later part. First, you try to read the Sutras. You will find nice, very beautiful solution, but you cannot find even from the modern uh, disciplinary. Now the problem, you are having the lack of reading, you try to apply the meditation, but meditation is not based on the good foundation, then what happened? You cannot construct your solution easiest way, the right way, nice way. I think my suggestion for you, if you like the accept, suggestion for you, of course, read the soul plus slowly, slowly, slowly. It takes one year or two years, of course, the knowledge, it's wonderful. Thank you, Vante. I do sometimes read the sutta. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Joe. Uh, any other questions? We have time for maybe another one or two questions. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Oh. Is it? Oh. Thank you very much for your enlightening talk on love and compassion. I have one question which has confused me and some others, but I am sort of getting clarity now. How is compassion and kindness connected? 
do you have to be kind to be compassionate or they are both the same? Okay. Thank you. Uh, it is, uh, actually, based on metta, compassion, kindness, karma, uh, is only uh, different, you know, these different words. Okay? But the kindness is the, the word we use to start from karma, metta, you know, there are four sometimes words. Metta, karma, metta, metta. How about then we talk in metta and karma, especially based on the kindness and compassion. But uh, compassion is uh, actually the, the slight differences there, the metta and karma. Example, karma is hade karma or karma. karma. If you feel any other person undergoing some difficulties, with that situation, you feel to help you. That is, we call karma. Uh, metta is the kind of uh, the mentality you are spreading to thinking like A to O, like not the situation, particular situation. Karma comes because of the particular situation. Example, if you see someone helpless, then you try to help him. It's because of basically the karma. That's the, 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 the priority there. But even the metta also there, if you have not developed the compassion there, you cannot, of course, apply karma. It is interconnected. But karma becomes possible because you need you have a particular object. You have a reason, but metta is something you are spreading your uh, kindness, the compassion to all without any, without being partial, but of course connected to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Monday, for that skillful answer. Do we have one last question that we can take? Yeah, maybe um, Bhante, I can ask a question. So, um, because just now, Bhante, you mentioned about how we need to practice right effort, right? Especially when it comes to not allowing unskillful actions, which have not arisen yet, to arise. So, sometimes, um, uh, I, I, I guess it's about finding a balance because we, are, we still have to go into society to interact. But sometimes, not allowing uh, un arisen un unwholesome qualities to arise involves a bit of a social distancing or rather like maybe uh, setting boundaries to, to be uh, more exact, right? setting boundaries. So, but would you say that that is a skillful means or do you think it's just like, uh, it's not going to work? Uh, sometimes, uh, you know that, uh, and that's what I, I suggested to you, uh, when you get some new factors, new things you will like, we should have a system to measure. System, the measuring way is going with Dhamma. But if you are, of course, lack of knowledge with Dhamma, but you can still measure this one with the human politics. We are all human. Okay, the human beings, really, of course, we can apply this humanity, possible to apply without being partial to like liberalizing religion, so much of the the common way you can apply the humanity. So the important thing, when you move to the people, when you work with those people, as I mentioned, like the best way is the considering the what is arising or what is not arising. You cannot, uh, of course, uh, think like that. Uh, this is was this was not with me earlier. Why I get this one? Uh, it was something like that. You cannot uh, decide when you because it's, the thoughts are very very quick, immediately coming and going, okay? But important thing, you can decide uh, whether this concept is uh, detrimental to you or others. If you, if it is detrimental, if you don't like, that's the, the easiest measuring system. If you don't like whatever thing, you can go with you first. If you suggest something to them, if you get something like, if you, uh, if you think this is of course beneficial to everyone, you have to understand, okay, whether it is beneficial to you first. If it is beneficial to you, it's also beneficial to others. But there are some situations we cannot, uh, with the with this common measuring system, we cannot apply. But most of the time, we can. What is what you don't like, even other people also don't like to get it from you or from others. So that is the easiest way. But you cannot, in a moment, in a situation, when you move with people, when you work with people, uh, you cannot... Uh, uh, decide whether this one was not, this one is something like that, you cannot, like that. It is not practical actually, but uh, the best way, of course, that's why sometimes 
when the, the thoughts are coming to our mind, the easiest way, okay, whether these thoughts are going to be useful or not. If it is useful, not should be on the particular group, but should be to all. It should be how you like it, even other people like it. How you don't like it, you can consider, okay, if I don't like this one, even other people also don't like it. But that decision should, should not be partial to anyone. Okay, sometimes what you don't like, uh, it is because of someone. Okay, so what you like, it is because of someone or kind of you are representing someone. But that is not here. It's mean that in the common way, you should be able to apply to yourself thinking what you don't like. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for the very practical answer, Bhante.